now. Are we receiving the signal now? Oh yes, it's coming in loud and clear. It's amazing. I'm not sure what it is yet, let alone where it's coming from, but it's interacting with our system somehow. Really? Like it was intended for us. But I don't understand how that could be. Maybe that's just how the story goes. Yep. What? Never mind. Is there a way I can hear it? Or however this is supposed to work? I think the signal is incomplete somehow. But you should be getting a printout of it now. What do you mean, you mean it's incomplete? Yeah. It's almost as if we're only getting a fragment of it. I need the whole thing. This is important. I'm sure it is, but this is all we're getting. Oh, great. Did the man who looks like me get the whole thing? He locked me out of the booth, so I have no way of knowing. But I can tell you that he didn't really seem to understand it. Well, that's good. So, what's in the sky? It doesn't make any sense. The stars are just... They're wrong. I thought I'd be able to see something. But it's like I'm looking at a sky that's just... It's not the right sky. But that's impossible. Really? I consider myself a rational man, Doctor. But this isn't a thing you can measure or explain. I've seen impossible things that have taught me just to roll with some punches. It's either that or go insane. I find it disturbing that you sound like you're speaking from ample experience. <laughs> okay. Now where is it? Signal printout. Ah, there. A printout of a signal. It too is a weapon created by the champion of light. In its words, stirs a new reality. But it is incomplete, and yet it provides a road map for the man to follow. A course that will lead him to a place where he may confront his enemy. The drive-in. I'll take a look at that printout in just a second. It actually is one of the manuscript pages. Yeah, Night Springs Drive-In Theater. The Drive-In. 12th Annual NSVA Film Festival. Of celluloid fantasies, it's now the site of an art exhibition. And yet, it's the search for closure rather than culture that brings the champion of light here. Hmm. Anyways, let's take a look at our manuscript pages. In the observatory. New the reality. The atmosphere in the projection one. booth at the drive-in was charged. Almost unreal. Despite that, the air felt cool and refreshing this late at night. It had been a hot day. The summer was nearing its end. But it wasn't over yet. Well, that really doesn't help. The spiders aren't really the work of the enemy. They're a side effect. A part of the dark place's less significant fauna that has managed to slip through the opening I made when I arrived. Yeah. Less an animal than an idea that has assumed the form of an animal. Makes them no less dangerous. But at least they're a little easier to deal with. The darkness doesn't protect them like the Taken. And thus they can be destroyed by either light or bullets right away. Oh, that's good. I've carried a flashlight and a gun for so long that I feel naked without either. It's all too often that I need them. The darkness protects the Taken. Shadows crawl over their forms like living things, uh -huh. protecting them from harm. Blows that would injure or kill a human outright mean nothing to them as long as the darkness persists. But light makes them vulnerable. Light burns the shadows away. The darkness that drives them is still in them, but now they're vulnerable. Flashlight and gun. Sometimes it feels they're all I have left. Yep. And the genius of Mr. Scratch. What's I've this seen one? The enemy, and it's me. I faced dark horrors before, things that live in the unimaginable pressures of the world beyond our own. Sometimes they masquerade as humans. That's what ultimately lurks inside Mr. Scratch. He's every mean spirited tabloid story about me an evil caricature, a creature formed in that vague territory of misconceptions, half truths, and the dark imagination of people who heard a story about me. An urban legend made flesh. A serial killer. My dark half. Brought to life by the power of Cauldron Lake. Hmm. So that's what Mr. Scratch is. Let's go back uh, to these ones. and Too many legs. And the twisted mirror. The strands of webbing glistened in the beam of my flashlight. Fine, almost ethereal. They were fresh and right in my path. 
I held my breath and waited, ear straining. Nothing. I moved on, concentrating on the task at hand. Just get what I was looking for, then leave. That's all I keep telling myself. For a moment, I actually thought it might be as simple as that. Yeah. I think then I heard too many legs you get this one across the, the first time you're in the rest stop, and it's kind of a foreshadowing page to tell you about the spiders in the next area. Now, the Twisted Mirror. Face peered back at me from the TV oh, yeah, I already saw that one. So, I won't read the rest of these until my next round through the rest stop. Same as I won't read the rest of these until my next round through the uh, observatory. And then you have these ones in the drive in theater. My right ear's block got worse. I didn't sleep much anymore. My life with Alice seemed like a constant fight. I was a wreck. Alice took steps. She booked a vacation in Bright Falls, a small town in Washington. It was supposed to be a chance to break out of the cycle I was in. She didn't know about the darkness in Cauldron Lake. Nope. And that's what ended up leading up to Alan Alice, Wake, the game. My wife. The best thing that ever happened to me. She smiles and the darkness lifts. For her, I tried things I otherwise never would. I've never really minded if it's made me feel like a fool. She's a photographer, and the world she sees through her lenses is unique and beautiful. She has the vision. She sees things others don't and knows how to make them visible to everybody. She did it with me, too. She teased out things I was only vaguely aware of. She always saw me in the best possible light. Which is a good thing, I think. And what about what really matters? And you can see I'm, I'm missing pages here. Missing a bunch of pages. So what really it's been matters? It's two years since I came here. Being that long without Alice breaks my heart. And I know it broke hers. I know she thinks I'm dead. How could I blame her for that? It would be a crime to pretend that she owes me anything. She took all the stupid, self-indulgent bullshit I brought into her life and still stood by me. Still loved me. It's no betrayal. But I'm a better person now than I used to be. I want to be that person with her. That's good. Okay, now let's investigate the drive-in theater. Who's saying what? Oh, it's you. Mmm. That's fantastic. Are you okay? Go away. No, I want you. But you'll get angry if you're here. So you gotta go. You know I'll do what you want. Really? Okay. She's a bit I, odd. I love you so much. Did you know that love hurts? Are you gonna hurt me now? Because you should. Lady... You got darkness on the brain. Yeah. I think I can help you if I can get the lights on in here. You can't turn the power back on. It's not allowed. You said. Really? So where shouldn't I go so I don't turn the power back on accidentally? It's the big building on the other side of the drive-in, but it's locked. Okay, where's, where's the, key? the key? Just so that I know to avoid it. It's... It's on the wall next to the cash register. But you can't. You can't. Don't be bad. Hey, no problem. <laughs> I'm just going to go do some mother stuff. Scout's honor. What you want to bet mm -hmm. Alan was never a Boy Scout? Just try to stay calm. I I've seen this kind of thing before. I think you're going to be okay. Why did I... Why is it so hard to think? I don't know. I'm touched by darkness. It's... I'm hoping it's not permanent. Remember when you were here before and you kissed me and then everything got all dark? Yeah, that wasn't that was me, lady. Best. That was Mr. Scratch. Listen, this is very important. Where did he... I mean, where did I go? Can you tell me that? Baby, you don't need to go anywhere. You're here now and you're in my head. You should be in me. <laughs> you should touch me again. Not with a ten-foot pole, lady. Yeah. Hey, just in case there's a part of you in there that's freaking out right now, it's not your fault. I promise I'll do what I can to help you, okay? I... I don't... Please go away. 
Don't sweat it. I'm just saying that in case you really need to hear it. Yeah. I've been there. I... I think there are spiders in my eyes. I think you put them in me. Yeah, I'm just gonna go now. Yeah. Let's find that key and get the power back on. But first... And we're back with old gods of Asgard and their manager, Barry Wheeler. Guys, you're on your comeback tour, and you're playing a lot of your classic material. But you've also got a new single out, right? How'd they come about? Was it hard to go back into the studio after such a long time? Are you kidding me? They were chomping at the bit. They were just itching to stretch those creative muscles. <laughs> now, it had been a while because, uh, you know, they, they spent a lot of time in, uh... Retirement! We were retired. Yeah, that's a good way to say it. Yeah! No, 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 no. We were at the lodge, and, uh... We escaped. We were at the retirement Home. Uh, thing. Retirement thing. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, really, once we got in the studio, things started happening. Now, the music has changed a little bit, and the boys were a little rusty. So it took us a while to find the right gear. But, hey, once we got going, whew, boy, they kicked ass. And it's an awesome song. It's called Balance Slays the Demon. And seriously, I think it's their finest work. Really? But, hey, I should know. I produced it. Oh, really? I didn't know you were a producer. Well, this is my first time. Yeah. I mean, they needed a little bit of guidance, you know what I mean? I mean, don't get me wrong. These guys are the best. But it's the 21st century, man. Things just sound a little different these days. But, you know, I kind of stepped in there, helped them make it sound all cool, kind of jazzed it up. Uh-huh. <laughs> that sounds like a challenge. Oh, no. It was really easy, man. I was just, you know, like, hey, give it a little zing, you know? Let's take it to another level so it really rips. Uh... You know, let's just throw some really sweet sins in. Like that, you know, just kicked it up a notch. But it's totally old gods. Well, listeners, you can judge for yourself. Yep. Here's old gods of Asgard and balance slays the demon. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to figure out whether or not I like this. Oh, no. Nah, I don't think I really do. I think I like the poet and, and the muse better. The man has encountered this before. People whose integrity has been suborned by the insidious touch of the darkness. Yep. He has experienced it himself. But merciful light Good. burned away the darkness in his brain. Okay. So they're not going to let us get there easily. Come on. There we go. Oh, great. Oh, there he look. is. Mr. Hero's here. You ready to save the day? It's Mr. Scratch. Fight our way across. Whoa! Where did you come from? There we go. Oh, they're splitters. Wow. Come on. There we go. Okay, to the light, to the light. Come on, Alan, run, to the light. There we go. There's a TV here, which means there's a new message from Mr. Scratch. Okay, he's not that good at dancing, even with a knife in his hand. Seriously. He looks so dorky. Oh, there's somebody there. No, it's the other way. It's the other way. The gun's the other way. There you go. Oh. Oh. So close. 